Let's prove this reduction formula for the powers of cosine. The way I would like to start this is just to get an abbreviation for what cos to the power of n is. So why don't we just let i n, i sub n, be the integral of cosine to the power of n. So this is for any n greater than or equal to 0. Now, so what we need to prove is uh, this. This is just i n. And this part stays the same. And right here, this integral is just i sub n minus 2, right? Because this is this integral is kind of the same as this integral, except this is cosine to the power of n, and this is cosine to the power of n minus 2. So this is our goal right here. We want to prove this statement here. Really what I just wrote down here is just an abbreviated form of the original question. Uh, it'll just save us a tiny bit of time without having to write this integral cos n every single time. All right, so let's start on it. Um, let's start with i n. And I know I just made that abbreviation, but I'll just write it again. The way we're going to get started on this is to break this up into cosine n minus 1 times cosine just to the power of 1. So that's the same thing. And we're going to use integration by parts. So let's just make some room for ourselves over here. Our usual integration by parts formula is this. The integral of u dv is uv minus the integral of v du. Uh, let's make our usual little chart here. What is u going to be? It's going to be cosine to the power of n minus 1. And what is dv going to be? Well, dv is just cos x dx. What's the antiderivative of cosine? That's easy. That's sine, right? So v is sine x. And how do we find du? Well, we just have to take the derivative of this. So this is cosine to the power of n minus 1. So by the chain rule, the n minus 1 comes to the front. We have cosine to the n minus 2. But then we have to multiply by the derivative of cos x, which is sine x. And I see I'm running out of room here. So I'm just going to shift this stuff down a little bit here. All right, so we can just write it down here. Uh, n minus 1 came to the front. Cos x was left alone. The power of n minus 1 decreased by 1 to be n minus 2. And then we have to multiply by the derivative of cosine x, which is minus sine x dx. All right, so that's kind of long, but it's just basic chain rule. So now let's keep going. Um, I n is what? Well, we're going to apply integration by parts to this integral. This is u, and this is dv. So here we have the integral of u dv. And by the formula here, the integral of u dv is just equal to what? uv, so cos n minus 1 x, times sine x. And we see this part already coming up. And then minus the integral of v, which is just sine x, multiplied by du, which is all of this stuff. So let's recopy that. So we have n minus 1, cos n minus 2, um, x, times minus sine x, dx. All right. Now what? Well, I think what we should do is clean up that integral just a little bit. This part stays the same. Uh, this minus over here and this minus can make a plus. This n minus 1 can be brought to the front. And notice how we have sine x times sine x, so we can write sine squared x. All 
Okay. Let's uh, close that off just to gives herself a little bit more room because we're going to need it on the next step here. So what do we have? I think the thing we should do next, maybe it's not totally obvious, but we're going to replace that sine squared x right here by 1 minus cos squared, right? Sine squared plus cos squared is 1. So sine squared is 1 minus cos squared. And that's fine. I think we should multiply this across. Let's see what happen, happens when we do that. Just recopy all that other stuff. Um, notice when we are going to have integral of cos n minus 2 x dx plus, well, I guess maybe I should put some brackets here, uh, plus integral of cos. When you have cos squared times cos to the n minus 2, we just get cos to the power of n, right? dx. Now, these, uh, we can write, you can, we can use our notation here, right? This is really i n minus 2, right? Remember, i n is power of cosine to the power of n. So, i n minus 2 would be cosine to the power of n minus 2. So, let's make those substitutions. And uh, it'll look a little bit nicer. Okay. And uh, so, like I was saying, this is really i n minus 2. And this is i n. Now, Notice we have a in over here and over there. We really want to multiply this out and get in completely on one side. So let's see what happens when we do that. This stuff, again, just stays the same. This n minus 1 is going to distribute across. Um, I made a tiny mistake here, right? Cos n minus 2x times 1 is there, but then this minus sign actually makes this a minus sign, doesn't it? Sorry about that. I'm sure you noticed that. So I can easily fix that very quickly. All right, we're back on track. Now, let's bring this term to the other side. It's going to become plus. So i n plus n minus 1. I n. And are things looking any better? I think they are. If we look at this, this is really n i n minus i n. And we have a plus i n out there, so the i n and the minus i n cancel, and we're left with n times i n. That's actually a sine x, sorry. And we are really getting close, believe it or not. Now, we wanted to get i n by itself. That's easy. Let's multiply everything by 1 over n. 1 over n times n, the n's, n's cancel, and I'm just left with i n here. 1 over n comes out front here. And n minus 1 times 1 over n, we can just write that as n minus 1 over n. And there's our formula. That's what we wanted to prove, right? If we look back up here, we said way back up here, this is what we wanted to prove. i n is 1 over n cos n minus 1 x sine x plus n minus 1 over n times i n minus 2. And that's exactly what we have here. So we've just proven that reduction formula for cosine. And using that, we can evaluate the integral of any power of cosine.